So Soundbeefs is one of those companies that has this strategy that is equal parts throw everything in the wall and see what sticks and equal parts chip away at the problem one iteration at a time until they get it better. And I know they're, they're a bit inconsistent, they're a bit all over the place, but here's the thing, right? They're the only ones doing it at the extreme budget end of the spectrum. So if they get it right, it's good for all of us. And earlier this year, we saw a number of really interesting options really showed what direction they were going in, including the Opera series. But I only really like the Mini Pro HS because that's the one that stood out. Basically, they ended up trying to give a lot for very little. And for the most part, they succeeded. This time around, the Engine 4 is a little bit different. It actually does less for the money, but it is a little bit more focused. Hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a fully featured device. It's got Bluetooth 5.3, it has LDAC support, it's got multi-point for up to two devices, although it's an either or situation. You can either choose LDAC or you can choose multi-point. You can't have both. What it doesn't have is active noise cancellation. Instead, you get dual concentric dynamic drivers. You get a 10 millimeter dynamic driver in the middle of which there's a six millimeter dynamic driver and together they reproduce the scope of human hearing. And this is kind of what that looks like. In front of you right now, you're seeing a frequency response. If you've never seen one before, that's all right. I'll explain it to you. It's not that complicated. Basically, you've got a line that is how this earphone reproduces 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is the frequency range of the human ear, human ear, human ear. And basically, this part here is the bass. This bit in the middle is the mids. And this bit in the corner here is the highs, the treble. And if you see something pushed up, it means that that part is boosted. So you can see the bass is boosted a little. Yeah, that's what you hear when you get these in as well. Now, an important thing to note is with these IEMs, I usually use medium sized tips and I had to upsize to the large ones to get a good fit. A good fit is supremely important here because A, you get a bit more isolation from the outside world, which is nice, but most importantly, you get bass performance. If you don't get a good seal, bass performance drops off really fast with this one. Now you can see here that it's boosted more towards the very end. That means that it's more boosted towards the sub bass rather than the mid bass. Now, broadly speaking, sub bass is your deep rumbly bass and your mid bass is your sort of the punch and the hit of the bass. And this is definitely a little more focused towards the deep rumbly side. Overall, you're not gonna get that deep rumbly subwoofer type bass here. What you lose in terms of volume and body you gain in terms of tight punchy bass which is what you get and it sounds very clean which is a huge huge upside and is not something i've seen in other sound beats before so that's really nice and the mids are relatively clean honestly i have no real issue with it uh, the treble is a little uneven you can see a big drop off at five kilohertz and then a lot of energy uh, around the seven eight kilohertz region that is not ideal and something about the treble seems to add a bit of sharpness to the mids like any vocals any instruments there's a kind of metallic sharp edge to it i'm not entirely sure why that is but it does seem to exist and I can't get rid of it even with EQ. Still, I don't think it's a deal breaker because overall I'd say this is a very, very clean sounding IEM, much cleaner than anything else that Soundbeats has. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, people are absolutely underestimating wireless IEMs when it comes to gaming. This had me playing my latest unproductive obsession, Battlebit Remastered, if you haven't tried it, it's super fun. It plays on a potato PC, it's just a lot of fun. Had me playing it for hours without any fatigue. The bass was good enough that I was really immersed in it. So was the soundstage and the imaging was tight enough that I was able to pinpoint where footsteps were about to come from, making me die ever so slightly less, which for me is a huge thing. Ah, oh, it's behind me. Oh, medic. Thanks, brother. Oh, no, he's the other guy. Oh, my God, the enemy team is so ugly. Why are they so ugly? I say this because I know some of you are going to ask me for the best gaming IEMs. Go wireless. It's really, it'll surprise you. It'll surprise you. Now, on the off chance that you don't sit at your desk every day and you actually get out and who knows, maybe even touch grass, then, well, you might get a phone call. This is what the Soundpiece Engine 4 sounds like 
in the midst of a fairly busy place, lots of chatter around. And uh, you know, just as a bonus, Adya had to take a boat ride on the way here, and I, I, I took a little mic sample for you on the boat as well. Check it out. All right, so we've done a boat and we've done a crowded marketplace, but what about traffic? Hey, let's take it a step ahead. What about traffic in a tunnel? I'm going to keep walking into this tunnel. It's going to get louder and louder, and you should be listening to my voice, listening to whether the traffic sounds are coming through or not, listening to whether my voice is going to hear you, and there's artifacting maybe sometimes. Well, what do you think? This is my voice, or the sound is in control in a very crowded, very loud tunnel. Okay, how crazy was that microphone quality test, right? I mean, come on. Okay, the boat thing was a bit much. I didn't expect it to do well. It was very, very noisy. But everywhere else, I think it couldn't cancel out all the noises. Like a lot of surrounding voices did come through, but my voice always came through clearly, which I think is a pretty good thing for this price point. And honestly, better than some of the earbuds I've tested at higher price points. And there's even more that is well worth mentioning about the Soundpeats Engine 4. But let's just take a minute and just look at what we've got so far. Even at this point of the video, when we're not done yet, and when you're just about to hit that subscribe button, I know you are. Here's what we have so far, right? We've got earbuds that A, are really comfortable, B, have LDAC, C, have multi-point, D, have arguably the best tuning that I've heard at this price point and higher barring a couple of exceptions and you've got something that has good mic quality all of that we already have established now take that add ipx4 rating which on a gloomy day like this could be a very nice thing to have and the fact that it's got outstanding battery life they claim 12 and a half hours you're not going to get 12 and a half hours but what you will get or what i got was between seven and eight hours with ldac running at about 50 to 60 percent volume which is nuts. That's got to be class leading or something, right? That's really good. I know that's really good. And it works on touch controls. And even though the touch controls are not customizable, they've got everything you need. So a single tap on either side will increase or decrease your volume, which is something I don't find in so many earbuds that are three times, four times the price. This is a good thing. Then you've got the play and pause. You've got skipping tracks and going to the previous track. And you can activate your game mode or your favorite voice assistant or pick up and cut calls all via touch controls. It's all there. The only thing is it does not have the ability for you to mute yourself while you're on a call, which is a useful thing to have. But other than that, I've got no real complaints. Okay, no, I have, I like, I have one small complaint. The ear tips that come with it, it doesn't reduce outside noise. It doesn't isolate very well, which between you and me is super important because here's the thing. I would recommend that you get a pair of foam tips with these. Any foam tips you like. Foam tips will A, make them stay in your ear better, so they're lodged in there. B, it'll cut out a lot of external noise, which is, by the way, free resolution. If you can't hear external noise, you can hear more of your own music. That is just a little life hack that a lot of people don't talk about. Apart from that, I've got nothing to detract from the Soundpeats Engine 4. It's just, it's this has got to be the easiest recommend at this price point that I've had this year. Easy. The only other thing that has this kind of performance overall is the JBL Tune 230 NC, which is awesome. Great ANC, great sound quality in terms of tonal balance, but not as detailed or not as clean sounding as this still, believe it or not. And plus it looks like it's from Fisher Price. This one has all of this, but in a package that looks really nice. It's like the Opera series from earlier this year, but much more sedate, much more elegant, much more understated. And this is something that I would actually put money on and put in my ear without it making me look like a lighthouse. So well done Soundpeats and well done you for subscribing to this channel. Here's a couple of other videos, by the way, also really interesting gadgets that I've reviewed. Check them out and I will continue to test this thing and I'll see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste.